Good morning. Um, this is my second time to do this video, actually third time. First time I got interrupted with a phone call. Second time it just didn't record. So here I'm again uh, doing Spiral 3 and I will hopefully have that up on YouTube as soon as possible. Okay, uh, Spiral number three. So let's get started. Okay, the total cost C in dollars of renting a sailboat for N days is given by the equation C equals 120 plus 60 N. If the total cost was $360, how many days was the sailboat rented? Okay, <laughs> so we know the total cost is C. N stands for days, which to me is not very logical, but anyway, we go with what they give us. Um, total cost, and total cost is also 360. So I'm going to replace C with 360, and I'm looking for N, uh, in a, and it's asking me how many days. So I'm looking for N. So I'm going to write this with 360 N for C. Okay, 360 equals 120 plus 60 N. Okay, now look at it. <coughs> okay, and I see that this is an equation. Uh, with a number here and a number here, so I never want to move or add or subtract the answer. So I'm going to minus 120 from both sides. Okay, so tracks away. Uh, 360 minus 120 is okay. Zero from zero. Two from six is four. One from three is two. So 240. And then what's left here is 60 in. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by 60. Okay, now I do not know my 60 timetables, but I do know that I can divide these away because our number system is based on 10. Okay, now let me say that if this were a two and that were a two, you cannot divide away a two, uh, two twos because our number system is not based on two. But, or seven, if there were two sevens here, you could not divide them away but you can divide two zeros away simply because our number system is based on 10. So that leaves me with six divided into 24, which is four. So I'm gonna write four equals N. Okay, and uh, this is a word problem, so I wanna answer with words. And because I've already done this once, I actually have the answer here. So let me just go get it. Um, so the total cost in dollars of renting a sailboat for end days was this. If you were to pay 360, if you had paid $360, you must have rented it for four days. Okay, so let me go scroll around that. Okay, and move on to the next problem. <clears throat> the cost to rent a construction crane is $750 per day plus $250 per hour of use. Okay, now I'm, I don't like that. Usually when we hear per day and per hour, that means as a variable. So let's read further because you cannot have an X in both places. So let's see what this thing is really all about. What is the maximum number of hours the crane can be used each day? Okay, there's a clue. Uh, so we're, uh, we, per day, we don't want the cost to go over $2,500. The rental cost is not to exceed $2,500 per day. So I'm gonna mark this out because we're not uh, calculating day after day after day after day. So we will not have $750 uh, in or any variable. But we will have 250 because we wanna know how many hours a day we can use this crane without going over our limit. <clears throat> so we're gonna write an inequality. Uh, it can equal or be smaller than, but it cannot go over it. So let's start. Uh, so we're going to pay $750 per day. Let me change color. Okay, $750. And again, we're only worried about one day, so we're not putting a variable. Plus, every one of these hours, we're going to pay $250 and I'm gonna use an H for hours. Okay, and we have a limit. Notice I left a space because we're gonna put an inequality here. Now, I know we can be equal, 
but can my cost go over $250? No. In fact, I'm going to put the little pointy part here because I want my cost to stay under or equal to $2,500. So there, here's an inequality. So I'm going to solve this and write an answer. First of all, I'm going to pretend this is equal and I'm going to look and say, there's my answer. And the 750 is like my answer. So I'm going to minus it since it's just positive. Okay, so over here, this subtracts away. I have 250 H less than or equal to 0, 5, and from 14 is 7. Okay, so I have $1,750 uh, for my answer. Okay, I'm sorry, looking for my paper. I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm going to divide both sides by 250. Okay, and I have H on the left. With inequalities, you want to keep everything the same. Here's the H on this side that divides away, less than or equal to. I divide by positive, so I'm not flipping this around. And that divides out to be, I believe, seven. Yeah, this divides out to be seven. I divided it earlier. So, and since I had already done this, uh, let's answer it. What is the maximum number of hours the crane can be used each day if the rental cost is not to exceed $2,500 per day? What's the maximum? So we're gonna say our answer can be up to seven, and of course, seven will be the maximum. So here's my answer I'd already typed. The crane can be rented a max of seven hours. Okay. Next. I just wanna check, make sure it's recording. Again, I've already done this, but didn't record. Uh, I couldn't put it up on YouTube yesterday. So I'm just checking it out. Okay, different color. Simplify the expression. Okay, uh, we, <coughs> We um, had learned this in um, lesson 24, I believe, anyway. Um, so, but we're adding polynomials. And as you recall, this minus sign affects everything behind it in the parentheses. So if you think about distributing the negative, that's exactly what happens. So I'm gonna rewrite the first uh, polynomial. And again, we're gonna minus x squared. We're gonna minus three x because uh, that positive changes to a negative and minusing a negative makes it plus two. Okay, so we have the string of terms and now I'm gonna focus on the exponents because if the exponents match, I can add or subtract those coefficients. So I'm gonna underline the four X and the minus X because that the minus um, X squared because that goes with it. Uh, I'm gonna quote my um, addition rules, which are opposite subtract, sign a larger, which is positive, And I'm gonna keep my variable the same. The exponent does not change. Okay, so now I'm gonna underline. I know you don't have color probably. So I'm gonna do this in color and make them stick it to stand out. Uh, I have x to the first, x to the first, and since these are the same signs, I'm going to add, take the sign a little larger, so this is minus 5x. Okay, and the last one, I have some constants or numbers, and I'm going to add them because they are the same sign, so this ends up being plus 10. Okay, and there's our final answer. Okay, factor. Um, okay, uh, you were taught to write a two by two box. When there is no number present here, it's a one. So when A equals one, we're gonna write this two by two box. Now, if there was a number there, we would write a three by three box. Uh, we have to take the C value and we have to factor it in factor pairs. And we're either gonna add these two factors or subtract them. Uh, these signs tell us what to do. 
Uh, first of all, let me write this first term here. And let me write the 24 here. Made it kind of small, didn't I? Okay, this sign right here is the sign of the larger. Okay, so whenever I pick these two factors, the larger is negative. So I'm going to put that here. Okay, now this, so I'm S O L, sign of the larger. Now, a plus sign means it's the same, the, the signs are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and put a minus here, a negative, same. Also, on our addition rules, if you have the same signs, you add. So we're not going to need the subtracting sign at all. Uh, so let me go ahead and finish. Uh, one goes into 24. Of course, one goes into everything. Two goes into 24, 12 times. Three goes into 24, eight times. And four goes into 24, six times. So when I start adding these, I want to look for the number that adds up to 11. And right away, I already know three plus eight is 11. So there's our number, and these are our two factors. So remember, we're going to put the largest here, and three goes here. But they're the same, so it wouldn't have made much difference. OK, how do you write your answer? You're going to write these two in binomials. So I'm going to make a parenthesis x minus 8, and then another parenthesis x minus 3. OK, now let me put a check here. If I said x times x, I would get x squared. If I said x times negative 3, I'd get negative 3x. If I said negative 8 times x, in other words, the underneath, negative 8 times x is negative 8x. And negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. And you see right away, these two add, and it gives you uh, what we started with. So here's our correct answer. Okay, going on. Simplify. Um, first of all, I'm going to do this in parts. I'm going to say, let me get a different color, uh, 5 over 10. Sometimes it helps to do it in parts. And we all should know that this reduces to 1 half. 5 is half of 10. So when I go to write my answer, instead of 5 over 10, I'm going to have 1 half. Okay, so x. Okay, if they were side by side, in other words, both numerators, I would add them. Well, if you're having division, you're going to subtract them. So I'm going to say 3 minus 7, which is negative 4. Uh, let me do that a little better. Let me just write equals x to the negative 4. Okay, now there is a rule in algebra that you cannot have a negative exponent. Sort of like the same rule that says you cannot um, leave a fraction unreduced. So this is a no-no when it comes to writing answers. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you that how to write the real answer. I'm gonna write the final um, fraction, one on top, and I'm gonna put this two, and I'm gonna put x to the fourth. Okay, now notice it's positive, not negative, because uh, look back up here at our original. If you took three of these x's, all three of them, and you canceled them with three at the bottom, isn't it logical there, that there are four x's left over on the bottom? So a negative exponent just means you got to put it across the fraction. So this is your final answer. Okay, Leslie joins a fitness club that has a membership fee of $20 plus $15 per month. Rashad's club has a fee of $40 and charges $10 per month. In how many months will the two clubs cost the same? Hmm, cost the same. So here's a cost, there's a cost. I wanna know when they are the same. So I'm gonna put an equal sign here and I'm gonna write this in y equal mx please plus B form because she's paying something once and she's paying something many times. So I'm going to write 20 plus 15. And I'm going to put M because she's paying that every month. That's the total cost. And then Rashad is paying 40 plus every month, $10.
Okay, so we're gonna look at this and we're gonna say, <coughs> there is no answer, but I do have two variables and I'm gonna choose the smallest to subtract away. I like um, taking the larger and subtracting the smaller. So I always, I'm on the lookout for the smaller variable. Okay, subtracts away. So I still have 20 over here. 15 minus 10 is five. So I have positive five M equals 40. Okay, now I have an answer and the 20 is a number like it. So I'm gonna minus the 20. So I have five M equals 20. And I know we can all probably guess that answer. Divide by five and M equals four. And you might have spied this while ago, but anyway, again, since I did it yesterday and it's so hard to, to write with a mouse, went ahead and um, typed it out at four months. Do you remember that word at? Very, very useful word. At four months, the cost will be the same. Okay, so let's look at this. Number seven, which relation is a function? So I'm gonna focus on, let me get a highlighter. I'm gonna focus on the X values. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and I'm gonna highlight, um, okay, this, I'm gonna look at uh, negative two and negative two and I'm gonna say because of that, I have a non-function. Okay, let's look at this highlight. The, check out these X values. Negative two, zero, one, and two, those do not match. So I'm gonna say that I think this is the answer. Uh, four, 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 four. Yep, this is a non-function. And the last one you probably can already see, seven, eight, 10, 10. So 10 and 10, make this also a non-function. So my answer happens to be B, not too bad. Number 10, okay, and you notice we're gonna omit eight and nine. So uh, anyway, I if you notice five divides into both of these, and if you notice even further, uh, Five doubled is 10 and five squared is 25. That's, we'll talk about that after we finish. <clears throat> but let's say for, that you don't recognize this. This is a one, so I'm gonna draw a two by two. And I'm gonna write my X squared here. I didn't do it first last time, and 25 here. Remember the sign of the larger goes here and the other sign goes here. So let's look at these symbols. This plus sign means that the, the larger is positive. And this means that they are the same. So I'm gonna put positives on both of them. Now I have to take one comma 25, this, since this is a C value, and I'm going to either add these or subtract. Now because of this is the same add, I'm gonna, I don't need the minus column, I need the plus column. So this would be 26. Uh, two doesn't go in, three doesn't go in, four doesn't go in. Oh, but five does. And five plus five is 10. So you can see that matches this B value here. So, and there in my two factors, notice that they're the same and they're both positive. Okay, so let's go back to that. Let's talk about this again. If you notice a number divides into both of these and this happens to be double and this happens to be squared, then your answer is going to be two binomials that look exactly alike. Therefore, my combined answer, you can shorten it and just say it is something times itself or squared. Okay, so one more time, you want to think of a number. If you think of a number that divides into this and this, it squares here, doubles here, then this is your answer form, I might say. Okay, so let's go down to this one. Uh, now, uh, look at this. What if one of these were negative five? Just what if? 
isn't five minus five zero? So you notice something here added away. The middle term, the B term is missing. So what number can multiply to give you 49, but what two numbers, excuse me, negative 49, but add to give you zero? Well, seven comes to mind. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna label this as difference of squares. I should have typed this one. No, I didn't, of squares. Difference of squares, okay. And if you notice that, um, here's what it's gonna be. X squared, 49. And I have to have a negative seven and a positive seven. Now, unlike this one, you cannot shorten it. You cannot, uh, this one had two pluses, but this one's gonna have one minus and one plus. So there's no shortening, x minus seven, x plus seven. Move it over a little bit so I can put a box around it. Okay, going on. Okay, multiple choice. The graph of the equation, uh, there it is, is shown below. Um, so here's the equation. For what value or values of y, x is y zero? Okay, so if you look at the x, x at y axis, excuse me, uh, we don't want to be, we don't want it to be nine, eight, seven, six, or whatever. We want it to be zero. So we want the x's that hit, uh, hit right here. So I'm going to circle one and circle the other one. And I'm going to look, this one's negative one, this one's four. So I am going to circle C. Excuse me, negative one and four. I think that's what I said. Okay, going on. Number three, which best represents the graph of y equals negative x squared plus three? Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna, I might make an xy chart, but if you're smart and you understand transformations, you'll realize this has, this uh, has an effect on a graph. This is a parent graph, it's a parabola, and you can see the parabolas. And this has an effect on the graph. This flips it over and this raises it by three. So I'm gonna put the negative uh, opens down. Okay, so right away this one's out and this one's out. Uh, then the three raises it three. Up. Okay, up three units. So this one's down, so this one has to be it. Okay, so I'm gonna choose B. Okay, 14. Jane is in debt. She owes her brother money and has nothing in her piggy bank. She decides to work odd jobs for her family and neighbors to build her savings back up. The graph below represents Jane's situation. Okay, so look at this. This is her savings in dollars. So, oh, she has negative $2. Okay, well, we know that um, because it says she's in debt. Okay, negative. So the graph below represents her situation. Now, she, but she is making money. At some point, she's going to be out of debt making profit or building her savings back up. So it says, what is the equation of this linear function? So I need two things. I need the slope and I need the y-intercept. Okay, since she's in debt, I have negative two here. So I know that this is gonna be wrong. Now I have to figure out, uh, she is down $2, so each of these are correct. So now one thing here, as I realize, her debt's not getting worse, it's not going down, so this one's out. So I, I have two to, two to choose from now. So I'm gonna pick two points. And I'm gonna figure the rise of the run. One, two, three, one. Okay, so three over one, which is three. And that's gonna make me choose A. Okay. 
Okay, now the slope of J of three, excuse me, means Jane will earn three dollars. Correct, three dollars every day. That is correct. Okay, so that is spiral three. Let's see if it will work today.